you can make $3,000 a day with just having your pickup truck. So you can make $3,000 a day removing snow from people's driveways. And in this video, my buddy Carson is going to share with you everything you need to know in order to start making a bunch of money offering snow removal as a service. Everything from licensing and insurance, what equipment you need, how to do the jobs, how to price the service for both commercial and residential. And if you stick around to the end, Carson's going to be sharing with you the biggest mistake that he has made in his business, as well as what he would do if he had to start over from zero. But if you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, or collecting payments all for free, then check out Quote IQ linked in the comment section and the description of this video. We're actually giving away $1,000 at the end of this month to somebody who downloads the app, leaves a review, and sends us a screenshot of that review to admin at QuoteIQ.io. Also, we're doing 30% off every product on the resource page until Christmas, so if you're interested in getting some training and saving some money, check out the first link in the comment section and the description and use code SAN at checkout. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Do we need any kind of like licensing or specific insurance with regards to, you know, offering the service? So licensing, no. I mean, you just got to be registered with the state, just like any business would have to be, um, you know, all your IRS tax stuff. So there's no special licensing other than, you know, what you need for normal businesses. Insurance, though, there is. Insurance is pretty critical in this because um, you're, you know, if you've got employees, a lot of times you're out in the middle of the night, you know, when, whenever it snows and it's usually in the middle of the night, uh, the roads are the worst condition they possibly could be. So there's a lot of dangerous aspects to that. And when you're going for long hours, because you just kind of got to go whenever it snows. And like last year for us, we had snow that would just, the storms would roll in and it would be three days long uh, and it just wouldn't end. So we, we had guys out, you know, and changing shifts where some guys would get out of the trucks, go take a nap or go to sleep for a bit, you know, put another guy in that truck and then alternate. Uh, so it can be pretty dangerous. It can be fatiguing. So you definitely got to have insurance. Um, and there's certain types of insurance that you want to have as well. Okay, beautiful. I want to get into, you know, some of the mistakes that you can make. Obviously, I guess if you run someone's property over, then of course you got to pay for that. So it could help to have insurance. Uh, you'd mentioned seasonality, like obviously this runs in the winter, but like uh, what exact months are you guys like really kind of preparing for like snow? Every year it differs a little bit. So like last year, middle of October was our first real snow event. And then we were busy um, all the way through the end of the uh, season, which is usually March, April, somewhere in there. This year, I mean, it's, you know, December, what, 14th today, and we went out twice this year so far, and we just did de-icing, salting, because we've had, you know, under one inch of snow on each storm. So we really got little to no snow this year, so. How hard is it to manage employees with that then? So, like, you know, because obviously they show up, I guess they show up every day to do work. Are you guys still doing landscaping when it's not snowing? Well, this year, yeah, we certainly could be doing landscaping still. Last year, because it snowed so soon, we didn't really schedule any more projects. Um, so we've got some fill-in stuff here and there. But honestly, that's the hardest part about getting into snow removal and scaling with snow removal is the employee side of it. I mean, like I said earlier, it's the worst times of the day. You know, you're usually going out at night. So people got to wake up in the middle of the night, you know, leave their families to go jump in a truck and plow snow or shovel sidewalks or stuff like that. So re employee retention is probably the most difficult piece of this thing. Okay. Cause when I think about snow removal, I think about like a kid with a shovel and he's like going driveway to driveway, removing snow. So can you kind of break down like what your customer base looks like? You know, it's at like, since you guys are doing, uh, you know, salting and, you're having to work at night is are you guys doing like main roads and stuff so we do some private roads where they're like hoa maintained or they're owned by like a township or municipality um but a lot of the stuff we do is just commercial so whether that's retail or industrial parking lots um we do some government parking lots as well for like libraries and things like that but a lot of these places you know a couple of nursing homes and it's 24 7 around the clock there's nurses there so i mean if it snows at midnight we got to be out there to clear it because people are coming and going and it's a hazard or it's a liability piece. So I obviously want to get into the pricing aspect of this, but this is very interesting, kind of the structure of how, how you guys operate. So are is it a retainer fee that they're paying in order to get you guys uh, on call or do you bill them after, do you invoice them after you've serviced them, you know, when it snows? Yeah, and that's a great question. It depends um, what you want to do and we do a mix of stuff and there's two reasons for that. Um, the two ways we do it is either a per time charge. So if we get, a lot of them are like, if we get one to four inches of snow, we're going to charge X to go out and plow the parking lot, shovel the sidewalks and salt. Um, if we get, you know, four to six and it's this price, so on and so forth. And then some are just monthly flat fees where we'll, you know, no matter how much snow we get, we're going to show up, we're going to service it. You're going to pay this amount each month. And then if uh, we salt it, we charge that additionally above and beyond that monthly fee. So those blended models are really good, especially for years like this, where we're not really getting a lot of snow. So like the month of November, we didn't go out at all, but we billed out, you know, a bunch of money and just guaranteed income because that was part of the contract. So 
works good for years like this, the guaranteeds, years like last, it doesn't work so well. So that's why we try to blend it where every time we're going out, we're covering at least all of our expenses and then making some money on those per time charge accounts. And then uh, we've got the monthly income to cover you know, all of our costs and then profit as well. Okay, sweet. So when you're bringing new customers on, like you said, you're blending them. So are some people charged by time and some people charged, you know, just on the monthly retainer? Like which one would you even rather? Would you rather have the retainer retainer fee or? Honestly, for us, because we've got, you know, the whole landscaping side of it um, and our excavating company, and there's a lot of overhead and equipment that comes with that. What we try to do is get enough people um, on board to cover all of our overhead expenses if it doesn't snow at all all winter or very minimal. And then what we try to do is get um, an even break between at minimum, we've got our overhead covered on the guaranteed monthly income. And then every time we go out, I factor what it's going to cost us to go out in our labor, our fuel, our truck time, um, everything, breakdowns, you know, overhead for breakdowns. And I try to make that up in every per time charge. So every time we go out, we're at least covering all our costs and then making some money. And then each month, if it doesn't snow, we've got guaranteed income coming in to cover all of our expenses as well. And then the accounts that we get above and beyond that. So that's kind of our base. That's our minimum. And then everything above that is just really, I try to push the clients, you know, whatever works best for you and your budget. A lot of residential stuff, because we do driveways as well. Those people just want to pay per time. And a lot of uh, rental properties like apartment buildings and things like that, they just want a flat rate because they want to budget it in because they know what they're making off their rents for their tenants. And so they don't want to have a fluctuating expense each month. They just want to know what they're going to pay and budget it in. This is very interesting service because it's very weather dependent, right? So uh, I guess I kind of want to bring it back a little bit. So like, let's say you just wanted to get started in this. Whenever you, well, I mean, I knew you acquired the company and probably you guys already had all the equipment and everything, but did you ever just do driveways at any point in time? Yeah. I mean, we not, I guess, just driveways, but um, we do a mix of stuff, like I said. But if someone right. wanted to get started, honestly, that's where I would start because some of our most profitable accounts are the driveways. Um, it's a little bit harder because you got to bill, you know, to make the same amount of money as you do on a commercial site, you got to have, you know, maybe five to 10 driveways. But if you can get a really dense driveway route, we figure it, uh, we can charge about a 325 to $350 an hour is what it would end up charging because we're just charging per time for the driveways. But with how quick we can do them in an hour, it's about 300 to $350 an hour um, is what a truck can charge out at. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, that's actually really good. Okay, sweet. Cause I want to make yeah. sure like, obviously you're doing snow removal at such a high level. I want to make sure that anybody that's coming into it can kind of like, you know, get some good info as well. So like, let's say, uh, Carson, that I wanted to start a snow removal business. Um, obviously it hasn't snowed a lot there so far, Would I just go knocking doors in a neighborhood and say, Hey, when it snows, I'll come take care of it. And like, what's like, what would be kind of the pitch to that? Yeah, I would say, you know, if you don't have a lot of money to start and invest into advertising or stuff like that, just go knock doors. I mean, there's so not a lot of people want to shovel snow and they don't want to, you know, or plow their driveway or whatever it is. Just go knock the doors and start getting people's uh, attention and just tell them, hey, you know, and if you don't want to do it or, you know, they don't want to sign up for your service, could you recommend somebody that might? Or do you have a neighbor, you know, that has somebody do it? Um, just ask for, ask for a referral if or a recommendation if they don't want it. But yeah, knocking doors is going to be the best way to get into that residential market. But is there any way for us to get money today, even though it hasn't snowed? Like, can we say, hey, you know, like, what what would the structure look like? It would look like, because obviously, if I knocked the neighborhood and I got like, you know, 40 contacts, as soon as it snows and I have 40 people calling me, like, is it even possible to service all those people? Well, a friend of mine did this last year. He just did residential, right? And he just had his own pickup truck. He did about 30 to 40 residential accounts, but they were all super close by. And it would take him probably 10 to 12 hours but he was charging 70 to $80 per driveway for each one of them, doing 40 of them in the course of 10 to 12 hours. And he was making really good money doing it. So this is this is doable at scale. And also, um, if you're just starting out, kind of talked a little bit about cost. I want to look, we'll look at some video footage here in a minute. But first and foremost, I want to get into equipment. So can you take me from like beginner equipment, just getting into it to kind of where you guys are at and what you guys have now? Yeah, so beginner equipment is probably going to be pretty much the same for everybody. I mean, really beginner. You can start with, you know, as simple as a shovel. If you want to go out and just I'm gonna shovel your driveway for you, knock the doors, you know, go to the neighborhood that you live in and just try to get people to sign up. Just tell them you're going to show up every time, shovel the driveway. That's, you know, really beginner. Then you can level up to like a snowblower from there. That's going to help make you more efficient. You can take on more accounts. Um, if you do have some capital to spend or you already got a pickup truck or something like that, putting a plow on the front of your pickup truck is going to be the most efficient way to do those. Um, and that way you can knock out a whole bunch of them. Yeah, there's an example there of just one of our trucks and that's going to be the best way to go around and do driveways. 
Okay, so can we kind of talk about a price point for each? So obviously, like if you just had a shovel, you know, that would be a relatively cheap way to get into the business. You could do it for, I don't know, a shovel cost $20 or something, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, so can you kind of talk about the levels? Like what would the snowblower be as like a next level? Yeah, so you're probably going to, to go buy a new like Toro snowblower or something like that, you're probably going to spend 600, 700 bucks, something. So not crazy. But if you think about that, if you're charging $70 a driveway, you need to do, you know, that driveway 10 times or get 10 driveways. And the first time you go out, it's paid for itself. And then you've got gas and all that other stuff too, which is now you have to add that into your expenses every time. Um, so, but I would say 700 bucks somewhere in there to get a snowblower and you can go on marketplace and get used snowblowers for, you know, even like 50 bucks. Right. So you can find used ones for cheap, but, uh, then you go up to like a pickup truck and a plow. I mean, if you go buy a brand new pickup truck, you're probably going to spend between 50 and $60,000 and you can go, you know, well over that if you want a nice one. Um, but you can get into a decent pickup truck for around twenty to thirty thousand dollars and be in a good spot. And then to go buy a new plow, it's going to cost you anywhere from eight thousand to ten thousand dollars to get that thing put on the truck. So there's kind of a whole range depending on the quality of equipment you want. But you can do it for as little as you know that shovel for twenty fifty bucks to a snowblower seven hundred up to that truck full package cost is going to cost you you know thirty to forty thousand dollars. Wow. Dude, I love how like you're very cost centric, like a lot, like I can tell you run a legitimate business because a lot of people that, you know, I've had people on the channel that, you know, they run a business, but they're not as like, you probably have a P and L, right? You probably tell me what your profit and loss statement is, huh? Oh yeah. You got to know your numbers. Cause if you're not factoring it in, you know, it's as simple. Like I said, when you go from that shovel to the snowblower, yeah, you spend 700 bucks on the snowblower, but now you got to buy gas for it. And then you got to change the oil in the snowblower. So there's a, there's a cost that goes into every piece of equipment, pickup trucks, you know, again, you got gas, diesel, you got oil changes, tires now. So there's a lot of other expenses that you don't see right away that you got to factor into that price. Right. And a lot of people make the mistake of not even thinking about the cost as much and they just see the money coming in. And then before you know it, the costs start, you know, creeping up and exactly. Yeah. It's not a good way to go. Okay, sweet. So if we want to start this business with relatively no money, we technically could get the shovel, go to knock doors, leverage that into the snowblower and eventually graduate to kind of, you know, the current setup, which is which is one of these, right? Yeah, exactly. And then we've got skid loaders and front end loaders and stuff like that as well that got plows on them and whatnot. But that's more specialty stuff. That's for, you know, commercial parking lots and things like that. So that was a skid loader with a cage containment plow on it. That one was used for doing an HOA of townhomes. So that, you know, it can turn really quickly and turn around. Um, so it makes it super efficient. And then that containment plow holds a bunch of snow in it so you can go a long ways without it spilling out to the sides. Right. And you said snow moving. So you guys can actually, are you, do you, are you loading the snow up and bringing it elsewhere? Yeah. So depending on the sites, like when we get down into St. Paul and Minneapolis, a lot of the sites don't have enough room to keep all the snow throughout the year on site. So we actually have to load it into dump trucks and then haul it out of the cities to a location. We've got a couple of yards that we dump at um, and a couple that we own. But then we just dump the snow there and it just melts in the spring and we charge for the equipment to load it. We charge for the equipment to haul it. And then we actually charge a disposal fee to dump the snow at our property. And then it just melts in the spring. And there's always like some garbage you got to pick up. But at the end of the day, that's one of the best um, pieces about snow removal or one of the most lucrative things is we can get the account to not only plow the snow, push the snow to the side, um, put salt, ice melt down. But then in between storms, when there's nothing else to do, it's not snowing, we haul some snow out and then we get paid to do that as well. Not to mention like you're selling the space too. That's genius. Like, and then yeah. it just melts. Like, and then every year exactly. you get to sell you don't the space. Have to do anything with it. Dude, that is brilliant. So that's like a whole other little business, I'm sure. I mean, is that lucrative? Like if you just had like a field, you could sell it to, you know, people to put yeah. snow there? It, it certainly is. You, the closer to the inner cities you get um, where, you know, it's just all concrete and parking lots and there's no room to put snow, the closer to that you can get, the more you can charge for it. I mean, if you're way, you know, two hours out of the cities, no one's going to want a truck at that bar because the trucking's so expensive. But if you're close by and you got room, there's a couple abandoned malls um, that other people own in the cities here that they just stack snow in the parking lot because they have nothing else to do with the mall. Dude, that's incredible. I never even thought about that. I love, I love like thinking about like, selling space for money yeah that's what we do with our properties that we also stack snow at we just uh people can store trailers there or other stuff as well and we just charge to rent outdoor storage so yeah. and then like i mean once you get down into like the winter do you have to tell them to leave or is that just a section of it is just like outdoor it's storage? just a section of it yeah okay the thing is i don't think people understand whenever you want to start a business you need to have like so many ways for money to trickle into the business and the more ways that you have like the more you know obviously more money you're going to make but 
just more sustainable to businesses because when you're only relying on one source of income, like very quickly, if that shuts down or something happens, like you're in trouble, right? So exactly. Yep. Having all these layers in here is, is absolutely beautiful. Um, okay. So I, we talked a little bit about pricing. I want to show this video and kind of uh, walk through uh, maybe some of these jobs here. So can you, can you kind of walk us through like what this job is in particular? Yeah. So this specific one here was a HOA. It probably was if I remember correctly, maybe like 60 homes, like the one you're seeing are twin homes there. So that's two homes in front of you. Um, but there's probably 60 of those. And then we just left that skid loader on site there and then uh, went through and plowed everything. Uh, the dr operator would just drive their vehicle to the site, jump in the skid loader, start up the skid loader, and then go from there. So we didn't have to trailer to the site. It worked really well. And we just left that thing on site. Okay. So let's see. So this must be, I don't know if this is another job here that you're going to. These are some driveways, I think. Yep. These are some, again, another association uh, of driveways here. So these are a little trickier to get into, especially if you're starting just because we got these through a management company. So that side of it, and same with the commercial, um, you got to have your contacts and network, you know, and just who can you talk to at these management companies or, you know, Google them, pick up the phone and cold call them. Hey, I want to bid your cell removal for, you know, any associations you might have in the area. But it takes a little bit more work to get into these and it does just knocking doors in the neighborhood. So because it's, it's really a connection driven industry when you get into the commercial stuff, they want to work with who they know and who they can trust. Because there's a lot of people that just don't show up or they overslept. I mean, when we get, uh, I, I always tell everybody, um, we got to hire, you want 15 people to show up for snow removal, you got to hire 30 people because about half of them are going to show up each time because somebody oversleeps or they get stuck in the ditch or you know whatever it is because it's just crappy hours and it's the worst conditions wow it's gonna be hard to find employees for man that's terrible it is difficult for sure but you can charge for it because everybody needs the snow removed at the exact same time and there's only so many people that can do it so charge for it supply and demand so like i said i don't that there's no snow over here obviously you can't you can't really drive on this right that's why it's got to be removed i mean how many you guys have to have like a lot of accidents around there because you know I can't imagine it all gets removed. You know, I'm sure some people like drive off the road and stuff, huh? Yeah, no, it can get dangerous. So that's why we, a lot of commercial sites, they want us out there right away or they want the parking lots cleared before 7 a.m. So it's, that's where it gets tricky. If it stops snowing at 3 a.m., well, you got a few hours to go and clear the snow. Uh, if it stops at 5 or 6 a.m., well, now you've got that time crunch. You know, it's all compressed into a couple hours. You got to try to get everything done as soon as possible. So it's, uh, it's kind of like gambling, you know, you got to, <laughs> Make sure you want to take enough accounts to make money, but you don't want to take too many that you can't get them done in time. So right, right, because I can imagine like people wouldn't be very happy if you promised that you were going to be taking care of their stuff and you you didn't, right? Yeah, you uh, show up to Target and you're trudging through six inches of snow just to get through the front door. Customers aren't happy. The employees aren't happy. It's not good. So I mean, but that's like a potential customer, huh? Target, right? Would a Target hire you to? Yeah, um, we did a we did a Target distribution center a couple of years ago where they had all the semis and everything, and it was super high tolerance. You know, it's just like an Amazon FBO uh, warehouse, right? They've got right. truck semis coming all the time. So they were, as soon as it started snowing, they wanted us on site plowing, no matter how much snow we had. Um, a lot of sites have a one inch trigger. So as soon as they hit one inch of snow, they want you to come out. They just said, as soon as it starts snowing, get somebody on site. We can't afford to have these trucks getting stuck, especially this time of year during the holidays. So it can be high maintenance. Wow. I was going to ask you how we do it. Can you kind of break down? Obviously, we need to push the snow off of the driveway. Can you kind of talk to like what are the upsells as well? Um, I know you talked about salting and a couple of other things. Yeah, depending on how much you want to do, you know, just take a residential driveway for an example. You could upsell on salt, you know, if you want to have de-icer put down or even like sand for some traction, right? So there's one upsell. Um, do you want to have your sidewalk shoveled? There's another upsell. Um, and, and those are really the three main ones. Uh, you can really do that a lot more when it comes to commercial accounts because you can have you can start pre-treating with salt or there's actually a liquid salt it's called brine that you can put down so that way it starts melting the snow as it's falling um, so it keeps the parking lots safer and cleaner a little bit longer um, so when you get into the commercial stuff that's where you can really start to charge multiple times we've got a couple of government contracts with the county that uh, we get, you know, one inch of snow, we'll go out, plow it and then salt it. And then it'll keep snowing. We'll have a four inch snow event and we'll be out there three or four times clearing the same parking lot, charging every single time we're there. So because they just, they want a high quality service. They want the parking lot to be clear and safe because at the end of the day, the average slip and fall in the United States costs the company that that happened $25,000. 
So at the end of the day, it, it saves you know you in the long run from the liability of having a slip and fall to just salt the parking lot again for another two hundred bucks. So man, that's a beautiful selling point right there. I feel like I'm about to get it done for my business too, and it doesn't yeah. even over here. I don't want to slip and fall, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, little yellow sign up <laughs> right so carson uh are you still doing snow removals or like your team does them all pretty much and you just kind of manage everybody our team does them all pretty much but if we have like last year i was in the field quite a bit because we had a record third snowiest season on record for us um wow. so it was huge snow year and we were swamped and everybody was um so i was in the field a lot last year um, just filling in wherever I could or, you know, kind of being a relief guy. If somebody was out for 10, 12 hours plowing, I would, you know, they'd go take a nap or go to bed or whatever. I'd jump in that truck for a few hours so they could get some rest and then kind of cycle through people. Um, so I was just a relief guy last year. And this year, you know, if it ever snows, I probably won't really have to be in the field much. So, but I honestly love it. It's one of my most favorite things to do. It's just, it's peaceful going out at night. It's snowing and you just kind of do your thing and listen to the radio. It's fun. Throw on some Christmas tunes or something and oh, really yeah. kind of you know just be in the season, huh? You know it. <laughs> um, okay, this this got a good question about our shorts. Uh, how do you calculate your contracts? We talked a little bit about pricing, but like, I don't know. Can you give us any insights to if we got a commercial account, how we would kind of calculate it? Or, you know, even like a residential driveway, is it, can we, can we do it by square footage based? I know you talked about time based. Yeah, so there's kind of, I mean, depending on the length of the driveway, you know, a typical city driveway, like some of the ones you're seeing in those videos there, um, around here they go for 65 to $85 per time. Um, but what I do for commercial is at the end of the day, you got to figure out what your cost as, as a company is going to be. So what is your labor cost? What is the truck fuel cost, the maintenance on the truck, wear and tear, the replacement cost of the truck? Um, what is your insurance cost for the company? Do you have, are you, you know, to a point of office admin? So there's a lot of other expenses that you have to factor in. But once you kind of figure out what your truck or your piece of equipment or your laborer as a shovel, what they cost you per hour, then what you can do for us in Minnesota here, um, and this data is all online. If you're going to do a guaranteed contract in the state of Minnesota, on average, there's 15 one inch snow events per season. So what we do for those guaranteed contracts where we just guarantee a price and we say it's a flat rate each month and it doesn't vary no matter how much snow we get, we figure out what each parking lot is going to take us time-wise. And some of this comes with experience. So I'll go to a parking lot, look at it and go, well, this is going to take us two hours to plow this with one of our trucks. And then we're going to have a shoveler here for the same amount of time. So it's going to cost us X amount of dollars per time that we have to plow this. Then I'll take that number, multiply it by 15, because there's 15 snow events in a season on average for that one inch trigger. And if you go down to a half inch trigger, it's like 22 or 23 snow events. And all that data you can find online through NOAA or other services as well uh, for your specific location, wherever you live. But then once we have that number, the total number, our cost for the year, I'll divide that over the number of months that we're gonna cover, which is usually November, beginning of November through the end of March. And then divide that into five equal payments for those months. Um, and then we charge them that and that's what they pay each month. So it makes it easier for the customer because their price isn't fluctuating each month. Um, and then we know we've got guaranteed income coming in. And then for those per time, uh, for per time charges, I just do that same thing where I look at the parking lot. It's going to take us two hours with this, two hours with that. So it's going to cost us X amount of dollars. This is what it costs us per time to go um, and plow this parking lot. Dang, dude, that was beautiful, man. I like the way you broke that down. Because the snow removal is kind of like, it's a little tricky. I mean, you know, obviously you could charge by time and you could charge by, you know, trigger event, like you had mentioned. I think, I just think that's beautiful. Um, So how much can we make in a day with this service? Like, let's just say it's a one-man band. He's, you know, got yeah. minimal equipment. Yeah, so if you're just getting into it, say you got a pickup truck, a shovel, and a plow and stuff like that. Like I was saying earlier, um, when we have densely, you know, tight residential routes, um, and this is honestly probably the most lucrative piece, especially um, once you start to get multiple employees and things like that, it's nice to have commercial because it's easy to send a guy to a site and he's there for two hours and there's not a whole bunch of questions and it's easy to build that. But if it's just you, honestly, I would just get residential accounts, charge that 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars a time to plow a driveway. And when you think about that, like I was saying, if we're at about 300 to 350 dollars an hour, if you go out and you plow for 10 hours in one day, I mean, you're making $3,000 uh, every snow event. So just fill that schedule up so it takes you 10 hours and you're going to be averaging around three, as long as your route is tight, you know, the driveways are close by, you're not driving 30 minutes to each driveway because that drive time is going to kill your hourly rate at that point, right? 
Right. So uh, maybe you can make three thousand dollars a day with just having your pickup truck. So as long dude, as dude, that's crazy. I mean, obviously it's not snowing like all the time, but like you said, last year was the third, you know, most snowiest year on record. So that was probably a pretty good year to be in the snow business. Yeah, for sure. No, we had a record year, and the nice part is, like, honestly, depending on what you do. I mean, if you're in the trades or. Um, even if you do have like an online business or something like that and you just wanted to make like extra money or you work for somebody else, it usually snows at night. Um, and a lot of people with residential driveways, they're more flexible than commercial. So if you just told people up front, Hey, I can only plow your driveway at night because I work during the day, I'll give you five bucks off because of that, or, you know, make sure we'll get to it first thing, but it's going to cost you $10 more, right? Just be upfront with them. Tell them that you could do this after work or, uh, you know, whenever it fits in your schedule, if you're going to school, do it after school. And you can make $3,000 and still have a full-time job or be going to school or whatever the case might be. So, I mean, the opportunity is there if you're just willing to go out and figure it out. As far as like, I just want to show this again, just because I'm trying to get a mental picture on this. So you're, if you were clearing a driveway in this truck, I mean, obviously the driveway has to be, has no cars in it, right? And then what are you doing? You're just pushing this snow all the way till the end and then you roll out? Yeah, I mean, it's a little more than that. So sometimes there are cars and then it becomes a nightmare because you're trying to get around that car. But we'll right. pull up to the garage doors, drop the plow, back drag that snow out. Like this one, the guy's got a car parked to the side. Um, so we'll push all the snow up the main driveway on this one because there's a hill and it's going to make it easier. You can see here how much snow there is. But um, pull that snow away from the garage, back drag it out, and then push it off to the side of the driveway. So. Dude, you didn't hit that, this, did you? That wasn't me. I think I was taking a video as evidence because you could see there's no tracks in the snow and somebody else hit that before I got there. So I wanted okay. to. Okay. Just uh, for we, anybody I mean, offering. Happened stuff like that before, though. Our guys, have, you know, and I've hit stuff and it's, yeah, I mean, it happens. So. Okay. I got a question about that coming up. But for anybody <laughs> who's doing any of this kind of work, you want to make sure, like, obviously it's probably pretty hard to do a pre-inspection walk around, but like, this is beautiful. You want to make sure you document this because- you know, if these people were scammers or something, they might try to pin this on you. And then, you know, you'd have like a lawsuit on your hands to try to repair all this. That's why the I jumped out of the truck and took a video of the snow. You could see there's no tracks in the snow right there. So it couldn't have been me. But that's what we do with our commercial parking lots. We actually go around and we take pictures of everything before the season starts. Busted curbs, you know, chips on the sidewalk, if light poles have been damaged or stuff like that. So that way people know, you know, hey, this was here before we started in the season. We're not liable for it. Right. You have to document pre-existing damage on a property or else, you know, you could be held liable for it. You open the garage, you put the plow down and you pull back on it. To Yeah. So like right now I just dropped the plow in front of the garage and I'll back up and pull the snow away from the garage the best I can. Um, and then grab that snow and push it to the end of the driveway out of the way. Got it. So what are the best ways to get customers for this service? I mean, we'd mentioned, you know, with commercial, obviously it's a little bit more difficult if you're just starting out and go knock doors and stuff like that. But any other ways that are really good for getting uh, customers? We've ran Google ads. Uh, we've had pretty good luck with that on the residential side because people just Google have, you know, snow removal service. Um, so if you're trying to target residential, you know, knock doors, send out flyers, things like that. And Google ads has worked well for that. If you're trying to get into the commercial space, it's really all about who you know, right? So go to, there's certain um, association networking events. If you want to do homeowners associations where there's like townhomes or apartment buildings or things like that. So I'd go to events like that, talk to association managers and property managers, because that's how you're going to get those accounts on the commercial side of things. So, or there's also government contracts as well, which is what we do a lot of. Um, there's a lot of um, the counties put out for bid. They call it an RFP or RFQ re request for proposal, or request for quote. Um, and then you can go online and these government services, they've got different logins and stuff like that. And then you'll place your bid and there'll be other people that bid on it as well. That's probably your most complex level of it. Uh, it goes residential, probably that commercial, talking to association managers, things like that. And then to that government bids after that. To be quite frank, like that's also kind of your profit tiers as well. You know, residential, it's easier to get into, especially if you're in rural areas. You know, almost anybody's got a pickup truck and they can just throw a plow on it and it's easy. Uh, if you're in the, you know, inner cities where there's less pickup trucks per capita, right? Uh, it's, you're going to be able to charge a little bit more because less people have trucks and there's more driveways to do. It's supply and demand. Uh, same with the government stuff where it's a little bit harder to get into because you got to go through this strange bidding process, quite frankly, and you got to find all these bids online and it, it is a pain in the butt. Um, so people steer away from that because it's just harder up front, you know, more work. 
Right. So yeah, the more barrier of an entry there is, like technically, the more money you can make. I mean, also with commercial, it's just like you're doing large parking lots. I can imagine that it pays a lot better than like a single driveway, right? Like yeah, it, and it definitely does. But at the end of the day, too, that three hundred to three hundred and fifty dollars an hour to do if you get a tight route of driveways. I mean, that's really good money for a pickup truck. So that, right. that's really good money. And then as far as uh, the government contracts go, like what is the payout on government contracts? Is it like a net 30 or a net 90 or? Yeah, it's like whenever they want. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll show up. No, Let's it's, hope pretty so. good, but it, it's like net 30 usually. Yeah. Okay. So right. that's If they don't pay, it's a tax deduction, I guess. Like we'll just hit them with, you know. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, okay, sweet. So that's, and then, you know, just so people know, there is more money in the commercial space. There's more money on, you know, doing the stuff for the government, but obviously it's not, you can't go knock on the government's door and say, Hey, you know, we just plow the snow. We need your money. So yeah. one thing to take into consideration, um, what is the biggest mistake that you guys have made or that you've made uh, with this business, Carson? I would say, honestly, the biggest mistake I've made was probably last year. We took on a whole ton of snow removal accounts, and I didn't realize it was going to be the third snowiest season on record. So usually for us, we don't have guys getting overtime in the winter because we usually have a surplus of guys, and we'll take on more guys from other companies because um, the trades up here just really slow down because of the winter season, right? So there's usually a bunch of extra guys that you know can do whatever. But we had all of our guys getting overtime all year last winter because we were just so busy with snow. So we took on probably way too much snow removal. We did honestly burn out a lot of the guys. We had a couple of guys quit, um, but that's probably, once you're you know locked into those contracts, you can't tell the people mid season, I'm sorry. You just kind of got to suck it up and do it. So we worked a lot of hours last year, um, revenue wise and profit wise, it was our best season ever, but it, it was a lot of work. So and we, it, we, a lot of guys got burnt out. You took on less contracts this year than I would imagine? Uh, yeah. We, we we took on a little bit less. Okay. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, yourself, last right? year was probably... You got to push yourself. That's right. There you go. You got to yeah. expand. Uh, one of the hardest things for people to do is to hire people into their company. So how are you finding like so many good workers? How are you training them up? Things like that. Yeah, and that's the hardest thing for us still. I mean, finding uh, skilled labor right now is extremely difficult in all of the trades. Um, nonetheless, this. So... And I would say snow removal isn't as skilled. I mean, you need to have some experience running a truck um, and doing that or a skid loader or a wheel loader, whatever it is, because this equipment can you know, cause tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage really, really quickly um, on a job site. But so you got to have skilled people. The hardest thing to do is find skilled people. But with snow removal, honestly, the best thing is find other trades, you know, say like Roofing companies, they don't really do roofing in the winter because there's snow, right? So obviously landscapers, pool builders, concrete guys, all these companies are laying people off for the winter. So we'll post ads or even talk to these other companies and say, hey, do you guys have anyone that you know wants to work or stay busy throughout the winter? Um, we could use extra people with snow removal and then just network, call other businesses because some people don't like these concrete companies, pool builders. They don't like doing snow removal a lot, but they have 20, 30 guys that they just end up laying off all winter. Um, so we can take them and keep them busy for the winter and then they go back to doing what they're doing in the summer, but it's difficult. It really is difficult to find good qualified people. I think yeah. that's super cool. How hard is it to train somebody with this? Like, do they have to just ride along for a little bit until they get it? Yeah. And honestly, that's how I learned how to do it. I mean, when I couldn't even drive 14, 15 years old or whatever, I'd just go ride with my dad in the truck in the middle of the night and, you know, just kind of watch him and learn how to do it. And then, uh, from there, you know, once I was 16, actually before I was 16, I was running one of the skid loaders on site because you didn't need a driver's license to do that. And then I got into a truck once I turned 16 um, and started plowing from there. But yeah, the best way to do it is just, you know, get somebody in the truck and start training them. Also, I mean, realistically, if someone's never done this before and they're going to work for another company, you're probably going to end up on a shovel or a snowblower um, doing sidewalks or things like that to start. And that's a great way to learn as well, because yeah, it's not as much fun. It's you're outside, it's cold, it's physical work. Um, but at the end of the day, like you really learn because when you're on a commercial site, the truck and the shovel crew have to work together because the shovel crew pushes the snow from the sidewalk into the parking lot. And then the you know equipment takes that snow and hauls it away to the snow pile or you know, pushes it wherever with the pickup truck. So running that shovel and just watching the equipment move around the parking lot as you're there at the same time, um, that's a great way to learn as well. So any last words of advice, uh, Carson, for somebody that's watching this, they're going to start their uh, snow removal business and they want to kind of climb the ranks to where you've been able to get? Uh, honestly, just if you're thinking about it and even if you don't have much capital, or you can't go buy a truck or something like that if you're younger, 
um, or if you can't even drive, I mean, knock the doors in the neighborhood, get started with a shovel. And honestly, like most things in life, just jump into it and get started, especially with snow removal. You'll figure it out along the way. Call other companies in your area. Um, maybe you want to work for somebody for a year and then go out on your own after that or buy a pickup truck or whatever. Um, I would just say start. Start somehow and start as soon as possible. Boom. Okay, I love it, man. Hey, look, every guest that comes on the channel has to pick the word of the day. It's any word that you want. But what would you like the word of the day to be? Snow. Snow. <laughs> if you guys made this far in the video, comment down below snow and I'll hashtag your real one. But until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace.